Hello everyone, it's uh, January the 6th, 2014, so Happy New Year, if I haven't said Happy New Year to you already. Um, I'm just doing a quick teaser for the um, Recording Studio Masterclass Mixing Rock seminar that is on at the end of the week. Um, if you can't make it, uh, this will be a nice little snippet of information you can add to your uh, mixing techniques array. If you can make it, there'll be loads more stuff like this, um, more practical applications and uh, hands-on mixing practice. So um, I've got a scenario here where I've got a bass drum and a bass guitar playing together. Uh, but unfortunately, the bass guitar has kind of played like an electric guitar. So you can hear it's not really played in sync with the bass drum pattern. This makes it kind of lack a bit of punch when it's actually in the mix. So, what's the solution? Well, we can try and kind of sync it up a little bit uh, in terms of volume pulses by using an expander. Um, I'm sending out the pre-fade signal from the, um, the kick into the key input of the expander. So you can see it's going into the expander here. And the expander is basically, um, it's a gate it's effectively. It's, um, it's reducing the volume when there's, of the bass guitar when there's no kick drum. But when the kick drum comes in, the, um, the bass guitar goes back to unity. So if effectively that's giving the bass a little bit of a push every time the kick is coming in. It's not perfect, it's not the best way to do it. If you uh, could get the basses to re-record, that would be fantastic, or change the pattern. But it does add a little bit of dynamic range that wasn't there in the first place. Okay, so um, for more hints and tips and practical mixing uh, techniques, um, check out the uh, Recording Studio Masterclass uh, Facebook group and the upcoming seminar, Mixing Rock. Uh -huh.